Welcome to Antigua in Guatemala, Central America. And in front of you is Vulcan de Agua, a 3,762 meters height stratovolcano. And I didn't climb that one today. I climbed this one, Vulcan de Atenango. So it's a twin peak one you can see, 3,972 meters is the highest summit, which is on the left hand side. And that's what I summited this morning at 4 a.m. wake up for a the sunrise and to the left is a very angry Vulcan de Fuego and oh my there's already clouds um, ash clouds erupting from it so you can't see it on the video but I can see it through the naked eye I might try and zoom in there you go that is an ash cloud it comes from Vulcan de Fuego an active volcano so I was there last night and now I'm here in Antigua beautiful part of the country, an old colonial town, um, got hit hard by an earthquake so there's lots of seismic activity here but I'm just reflecting on my journey um, so me and my friend Martin started at um, 11 o'clock yesterday with a guide um, what we did that's different is we decided to take our own kit up so we took um, five liters of water each and our backpack of tents um, cold weather gear to camp out on the mountain, you know, sleeping bag, fixed sleeping bag, and um, also our food. And food, I've still got food left over, and, the, and I still I carry this up and down. I've got in my food bag two bananas, uh, six apples. I was snacking on a lot of snack bars, uh, an orange small orange. Um, I did go shop in a supermarket unfortunately last minute, I was a bit and some pasta, but we used spaghetti and um, we hiked up, it was six hours travel up um, and it was a really slow place, really steep because you start about 2,500 meters and we camped at 3,800 meters and it was a grueling experience going uphill. Um, most people book with a company and the porters take their kit all the way up. So they just need their clothing and some water for the journey up. And the porters, plus a horse maybe as well, take the kit up and there's a tent ready for them and a cabin where you pay 90 US dollars um, for that. Um, why does everyone do it? Because Vulcan de Fuego is a very angry volcano. Um, it's an active volcano, one of the most active in the world. And it's amazing. When you go up, I heard it grumbling a few times as we're going up and it was a really cool experience to hear that and then be up there and you see this beautiful red lava spewing out of it and especially when the night comes down so you go there for like the sunset or sunrise sunset and you see it just like spewing out just really angry red makes its noise you know it's there and from Atanganango on the southern side you can see it so you can see here Northern side is to the right and to the left is the southern direction. And so that means Vulcan de Agua is to the west of those two, volcan those two volcanoes over there. Um, <coughs> so behind me is to the north. And it was tough, it was really cold at night, bitingly cold. Um, I had warm gear. There was a snore in a tent near to us, that was a bit annoying. So I only got three hours sleep and then had to wake up at 4 a.m. to summit to the top of Antaganago, which I was very, I didn't feel good. I was tired. I was cold, but the sunrise was amazing. It was beautiful, and and like and, uh, Vulcan de Fuego was erupting again, and just like it was, a, it was just an awesome sight. And then you sit there, just taking it all in. You get cold, and you try and stay warm, but you want to be there. So, what's best? Like we could take some pictures, go down, or stay and take it in. So, yeah, it was, it was a good experience, tough experience. Um, I'm glad I did it, carrying all my kit. <laughs> And I haven't touched wood, got injured from it. So um, yeah, I'm still feeling good, just tired. And um, the porters and the guides, the locals, they go up and down all the time. So our guide finished at 11.10 today in the morning and he went back up to take some kit up as a porter um, because he needs to work. Um, and yeah, they are tough people and they go up and down pretty darn fast. There's a cloud forest. There's also a pine forest, an alpine region. Um, unfortunately there's been a fire in the Alpine region um, so there was a few 
um, scarce areas which were burnt out and also there's a beetle infestation as well um, but they're managing it and the the, the cloud forest is beautiful and um, there's quite